My name is Walter Boyd, and I'm the director of Ex-Offender Opportunities with Protestants for the Common Good. First of all, I'd like to say a little bit about the organization that I work for, Protestants for the Common Good. It's a, primarily a policy advocacy organization. At our best, we are a policy advocacy organization, but we do a lot of other things as well. Uh, we do outreach and education in the churches that are part of our network. We're a network of uh, approximately, I would imagine, 2,500 to 3,000 individuals at about 300 churches. We also work ecumenically with other many denominations uh, within the Christian family as well as interfaith. We are people of faith advanced in justice and public life. <laughs> okay. Well, my specific area of focus within the Protestants for the Common Good is the criminal justice area. We have been successful and instrumental in a, a number of pieces of legislation that we hope will make a difference in helping people uh, reintegrate back into society. Uh, we look at this work, uh, this criminal justice work around uh, people with backgrounds as having really two different phases. You, we have what we call reentry. It's for people who have been convicted or and incarcerated or just convicted and have to then face life with the barrier of a conviction. And then we look at diversion and that is whether or not we can pass legislation that allows for a different way and a different approach to address some of the problems that we see in the communities. So take for instance low-level drug offenses. Uh, it, these are low-hanging fruit type of cases where we have individuals who obviously have, uh, we generally refer to it as a health issue within our work, but we criminalize these individuals because they are addicted to a, a substance, heroin, cocaine, uh, crack cocaine, and uh, it's not an effective way of addressing the problem. For one thing, uh, when we send people to prison, the chance of them actually finding help and being rehabilitated is much less than if we were to track them towards some type of treatment that can be found in the community. The recidivism rate here in the state of Illinois is currently at 51.8%. So that means that over half of the people that we send to prison will be back in prison over a period of three years. What we discovered in one of our dialogues with the state's attorney, uh, Dick Devine, uh, was that they had a program that they called drug school. And what drug school does is it allows an individual to participate in an intense educational program that exposes them to what they set themselves up for as a result of using drugs and uh, illegal substances. Substance abuse management addressing recidivism through treatment. The surprise to us was that the program was 85 percent effective. Now I've already told you that the recidivism rate in the state of Illinois is 51.8 percent for those people who we send to prison. We found that those people who we diverted to drug school, the, rec the recidivism rate for that group was only 15 percent. The program was 85 percent effective and what we usually measure this over a period of three years. What it tells us is that over a period of three years, 85% of those individuals who went to drug school had no further contact with the criminal justice system. It only costs us about $350 per capita to send a person to drug school versus the $21,000 a year that it takes for us to incarcerate a person in the criminal justice system in the Department of Corrections. The program seemed to have benefited some individuals, but the large number of individuals who get arrested with these type of offenses were never being sent to drug school. Uh, we arrest approximately in the state of Illinois about 7,000 people and convict them for these low-level nonviolent drug offenses. Uh, this is at a cost of probably about $250 million a year when you consider the Illinois Department of Corrections budget. Uh, if we could expand programs like drug school, we could, we could save the state an enormous amount of money. We could help individuals get a handle on what could become an even more severe problem with their drug addiction and we could also avoid the barriers that they face having been convicted and then battling uh, 
the barriers that are associated with uh, having been convicted and being an ex-offender.